Romanian philosopher Emil Kioran observed that we live in a society too afraid to confront the darker sides of existence. Instead of facing our struggles, we often hide behind distractions, achievements, and the pursuit of constant happiness. This guy dives into the deeper, often neglected parts of life, the discomfort, uncertainty, and despair that many try to avoid. We often tend to hide our illness because it can make us look weak. Many hit the gym and build body to maintain reputation and make women like him. In the following chapters, you'll explore the quiet weight of existence and learn to embrace life's uncertainties, understand the limits of happiness and achievement, and discover the true meaning of suffering. Each chapter will offer insights from stoicism and psychology to help you find peace, meaning, and clarity. Not by escaping life's darker aspects, but by facing them head on. Join us on this journey to uncover a deeper way of living beyond the surface of everyday pursuits. So without further delay, let's start today's video. And you know what to do if you find value within it. Chapter 1. The Quiet Weight of Existence We have those moments of our existence when everything is still and we are alone with ourselves, or at least with our thoughts, and we feel this burden, this unease. It's not necessarily sadness, but a kind of weightiness, the sense of life exhaustedness. It is an encounter with the raw existence of life, without the facades or the soothing stories to keep the hoods on. It might be labeled as despair by some people. However, in most cases, it is not something that one should be afraid of or try to get rid of. This was the message of Marcus Aurelius, an early Stoic philosopher, as he encouraged people to embrace the truth and face life as it was. To them, the recognition of the fact that life is uncertain and full of suffering is a means towards the attainment of the state of harmony. One of Marcus's sayings was, what impedes turns into the way meaning that one's challenges are the path that needs to be followed. There is a kind of clarity that comes when we lose this struggle and instead embrace the burden that we have been given. We can appreciate what is beautiful in the world, the temporary, the ugly, vulgar, or even the ridiculous. We can understand that existence doesn't call for great story to exist in its splendid richness. That is why it is in the existence, feeling, and suffering that we find something more authentic or less inhuman. However, in today's world, this approach is often met with an endless pursuit of happiness. People are told that their day should be happy, fun-filled, and full of pleasure. However, when happiness is pursued, it becomes something elusive like a carrot dangling on a stick in front of the donkey. Maybe, as the Stoics always suggest that it is precisely an endurance, in bearing the heavy burden of life, in taking and embracing the light and the darkness of life, that we find what it really means to live. Chapter 2. The Dance with Discomfort It really seems like life loves to give us a nice warm plate of discomfort, doesn't it? Whether it is rejection that we can never seem to escape in our lives, the fear of what the next day holds for us, or even that uneasiness that comes along with being unable to sleep at 3 a.m. Satisfaction is not guaranteed. Discomfort is in the package. But we invest most of our efforts in the process of avoiding it, creating the coats of comfort around ourselves, expecting them to shield us from the restlessness. But what would happen if we change our perception on discomfort? Even the Stoics understood it, not as an adversary, but as an educator. Epictetus, a former slave who was a Stoic philosopher, once said something that we should focus on things that make us uncomfortable. He would claim that it is not events that disturb us, but rather the meaning we give to them. In other words, it is not the discomfort which is an issue, but rather the way we perceive it. Think about it. Each time we have discomfort, there is something that we can learn. Perhaps it is about our anxieties, our doubts, or perhaps even what we have to offer that we do not know. To this, we could turn around and engage with what that feeling of discomfort might be seeking to communicate. Perhaps it's showing us where we have to develop, where we are stagnated, or 
what matters to us. In fact, discomfort can be considered to be similar to an unwelcome dance companion. We are not very sure of our steps in the beginning, and we may even trip and fall over our own feet. But if we are able to get up and continue dancing, we are bound to get into the right beat. And all of a sudden, one's life transforms a certain task from something that could be considered a fight to something that is a glide. Well, perhaps it is not about avoiding pain the way it is about experiencing and finding out how to deal with pain as a rather peculiar ally in this expedition. Besides, life is not always a plain sailing. It is a process of staking, stammering, stumbling, and at times, even painful journey. But those are the steps that make change and build character and give purpose to the seemingly random and senseless. Chapter 3, The Myth of Control. It's become part of human pride to feel like we are in charge. We organize, get ready, and program events to be safe, to maintain orderliness and avoid surprises in life. But in our hearts, we understand the concept of control is an illusion most of the time. Life has this peculiar habit of coming up with a rude awakening on that score. Certain events occur, which are unexpected. Some people you care about die, and life doesn't turn out the way you wanted. But this illusion is still in place, that if only we work harder, we are smarter, we can control everything. However, there was another viewpoint altogether for the Stoics. They saw life as something which can be changed, and they did not put on airs of one who can manage something which is beyond control. Imagine the pressure that we feel to control something as colossal as the world and everything in it. People's perceptions, our work results, the weather to be specific, it's tiring and to top it all off, futile. The Stoics suggested something radical, what if we cease to waste a lot of our energy on matters that do not actually affect us? What if we think about thoughts, attitude and choices rather than blaming the behaviors? Well, yes, it may indeed sound very simple, but let me assure you that is easier said than done. The state of relinquishing power is actually losing something and is like giving up. But it is not about quitting, it is about deciding where to spend the time and effort. As we stop fussing about the things we do not have control over, we are surprised to discover an odd sort of liberty. Then, we swim against the current and begin to follow it, and we know that no matter what comes in our way, we shall be able to deal with it. Well, perhaps it is not control at all that may be required. Perhaps the best is surrender. Surrender to the fact and aware that no matter what is around the corner, we have the capacity to handle it. It's not about defeating life and conquering it, but knowing how to dance in the rain. Just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying this video, please consider like and subscribe, and thanks a lot if you did already. Moving on. Chapter 4. The Bias of Comfort People tend to always stay in their comfort zones and do not go out of their way and explore whatever is out there. This is a human weakness. People like familiar things, their habits and relationships that don't put much pressure on them. This is a kind of inertia that is inherent in the minds of people, and psychologists have given it the name of status quo bias. People prefer things to remain as they are, even if it would be better for them to be different. It is a bias that helps to avoid change and new methods to reject opportunities for development and quite often to remain in the status quo. But here's the catch. Comfort zone doesn't allow growth to occur. The Greeks and the Romans commonly referred to them as the Stoics understood this very well. They said that in order to live a full life, it is necessary to get uncomfortable, have to take risks. Once, Seneca said, the difficulties in life as exercise in the gym build up the muscle of the mind and labor, the muscles of the body. To them, it was less suffering in preference to more in life. It was getting out of the shower with more ease than they got into the tub. Today, the status quo bias is not necessarily a negative feature. It is an instinct which made a lot of sense in our prehistoric days when we had to minimize on taking chances. However, in today's world, it seems to be going against it. We remain trapped in tedious careers. We hold on to toxic friendships, and we shun promising opportunities because change, 
looks like the devil incarnate. This bias drives us towards inaction, making us believe that it is better not to make a change than to make one and become lost in the sea of uncertainty. However, when we permit this bias to govern our decision-making processes, we are left with simply stagnated growth. The Stoics would have said that it is discomfort to which we have to pay attention, as it shows us where the real work is. In fact, it is during such uncomfortable situations that one is able to meet his or her greatest fears and liabilities. Therefore, perhaps, it is high time to challenge this mindset, to start admitting when it is making us play the little part. Discomfort is not something that we need to run away from. It is an opportunity to grow, to develop, to be more than we were the day before. Because in standing up to the norms of the current society, then we get to realize our full potential. Chapter 5. The Illusion of Achievement I think we have all been there once in a while in our lives, trying to get to the next promotion, the next degree, or the next award. It is the achievement treadmill, a cycle where one believes that one more achievement will be the way to happiness. However, any time we get to such a point, the feeling of achievement is followed by disappointment. Next, we go to the next goal, thinking it will be the one that will fill the void. This is not a wrong thing to do. It is in human nature to look for the best, no matter the situation. However, it turns into a problem when we get to the point where we think that our existence ultimate purpose is to accomplish something. The psychologists call this the hedonic treadmill, which is a concept that implies that people are quickly bringing their levels of happiness back to the base, no matter whether they have positive or negative events in their lives. That's why the satisfaction brought by a new achievement is short-lived than we imagine, and we begin to look forward to the next achievement. The Stoics, however, did not fall for this illusion of the mind. They said that power, wealth, fame, and other things that the society values are not good or bad. Instead, they are indifferent, things that do not define the value or happiness of a person. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, reminded himself daily, all is fleeting, memory, and what is being remembered. To him, concentrating on the accomplishments was futile, as it was similar to trying to grasp smoke. But the Stoics said that the true happiness lies in virtues, wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. These are things which are in our hand, things which cannot be wiped out by occurrences in the outside world. If we change our goals from doing more to being more, we come to greater meaning and clarity. Well then, possibly it is not about getting to the top of the mountain, but how one climbs it. Instead of getting caught up in the illusion that our value lies in our accomplishments, we can ask ourselves. The question to be asked is, are we becoming more like Christ? Having the quality of living that is moral, honest, and virtuous, can we say that we are living with integrity? Because it's not the victory that counts, but the man that is formed in the process of winning the victories. Chapter 6. The Burden of Choice In a globalized environment, it seems as if we are overwhelmed by the decisions that surround us in the course of every day. Whether it's what to have for breakfast or something big, such as selecting a career or a life partner, people are stuck with a decision that is overwhelming at some point in their lives. This is called choice overload. The idea is that being presented with too many choices results in stress, decision fatigue, and even regret on the choices that we make. Societal advancement presents us with the greatest opportunity that, if properly decided, one can build his here perfect world. However, this freedom can easily become a problem. It is the fear of making a wrong decision, of not getting into this perfect choice that one wants to pursue. According to the Stoics, human beings had a different perspective of choice. To them, it was not about being in the right decision, but more about how we live in the wake of that decision. The famous Epictetus came up with a quote, it is not things that turn out as they do, which is of importance, but it is how you take it. The Stoics held the belief that it was not the decision that was of value, but the person that was made through the decision. 
Here's the twist. In fact, freedom may be fatal if one lets it. The freedom to choose, in particular, may be fatal if one lets it. This creates a condition where one gets too focused on choosing the correct choice, which in turn puts someone in a loop of questioning the decision made and being generally unsatisfied with the finally chosen option. With the stoic approach, there is a chance to get rid of it. Usually, we can remove the pressure from such choices and make decisions based on principles and accept the consequences. The moment you decide that you don't care about the consequences and that you will do the right thing, then the problem of choice does not exist. Perhaps the key is not in avoiding choice altogether, but accepting it as a practice of exercising the virtues of wisdom and courage. It is in simplifying decisions where we base them on values rather than the end result that we find the best way. So, the next time we're faced with too many options, maybe we should ask ourselves, not which care is superior, but which car corresponds to the person we want to be. Chapter seven, looking for comfort in the uncomfortable. We are in an age of uncertainty and instability with our employment, love, and personal identity. People seek for order and certainty while the tighter they grasp for it, the more scarce it becomes. It feels as if it is impossible to grasp it with our hands. The harder we try and cling on to it, the faster it slips through our fingers. This constant search for certainty is tiring and at the same time is one of the biggest drives in human beings. But what if the problem is not the uncertainty, but our inability to accept it and be comfortable with it? The Stoics were well aware of this. They urged that unpredictability is not only unavoidable, but necessary. Seneca said, it is not because things are difficult that we do not dare, but because we do not dare that they are difficult. This means that one can be afraid of, for instance, a certain area in a forest and the journey can be impossible only if that person allows the fear to get in the way. The moment we come to terms with the fact that the existence of the unknown is inevitable, then the unknown becomes a prospect for expansion. In psychology, uncertainty tolerance and the examinations of it reveal that people who embrace the idea of uncertainty are less likely to be anxious or depressed. They are not lovers of anarchy, but are made to understand that there are some things which cannot be arranged. They know that the world is ill, tempered, and therefore dealt with instead of the other way around. It can be learned from the Stoics by practicing amufati, which means loving fate, in other words. It is not a mere acceptance of what happens, but rather loving what happens. The practice of perceiving every situation in life is a chance to be virtuous or learn how to endure life's hardships. It is about embracing new things, new experiences, change or surprises instead of fearing it. Finding peace in uncertainty means understanding that life isn't a problem to be solved, but a mystery to be lived. It's accepting that we won't always have the answers, and that's okay. It's realizing that uncertainty is what makes life rich, full of surprises, challenges, and growth. So, instead of fearing the unknown, we might find peace in simply allowing life to unfold, trusting in our ability to handle whatever comes next.